Give me that beat. Give me that beat. Give me that beat. Yeah! <sighs> Historical Weapons Guild. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that, did I say, is that the name of it? Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Rondells, bucklers, uh, swords, quarterstaffs. What else is there, man? We got this. We got this. Well, I guess there's that. Stop it. Stop, stop. Using the sword to chop stuff in half. Hot damn, man. We are back at the Historical Weapons Guild with Anthony Buonomo, and we are meeting Carl Bala. How do we get here, man? Carl's a cutting expert. He yeah, cuts yeah. things with swords. Yeah, dude, I didn't know, I guess tournaments with cutting is a thing. And, and he's one of the best in the world. Yeah, Anthony says uh, he's got a guy who knows how to cut stuff. And I'm like, yeah, sure, because when Anthony knows a guy, they're cool. <laughs> yeah, sure. We'll bring him on, they've got some sort of bizarre skill. How do they judge cutting? We have uh, grass rolled mats, that we'll set them up and they'll give us specific patterns. And then they'll uh, judge what our form looks like, as well as what actually happens to the, the target. How do you find your targets? Do they just like walking up and down the street, you throw them in the back of a van, or? That's we don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. Okay. Uh, no, so uh, uh, we actually use tatami mats, uh, which was uh, is, is also a uh, target used in Eastern martial arts, and it is effectively just uh, carpet. How much of it is this, just the sword being sharp? How much of it is technique? How much of it is power? Like, what's important in this? Right, okay, so the three things that really matter are the edge alignment, as you're cutting the mat, the speed, and then if you have a hard target, the structure you have to resist any uh, uh, forces coming back as you're trying to cut through that. Like Basically, bone. Yeah, yeah, like in my mind, I'm picturing taking a baseball bat to a metal pole, like you're gonna feel it uh, resonate back right, at exactly, you, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, so in that case, I guess I, it matters the angle of attack that you go. D Absolutely. Does it matter, I assume, the farther out on the sword that slices, the more power there is, but I assume also, kind of like a guillotine, you want to make sure that you maximize the amount of cutting that happens? So uh, what we're gonna be doing is hewing. The difference between hewing and, and, and slicing would be like you hew a tree with an ax, uh, you slice a piece of uh, cheese. So uh, chopping or, or and cut, uh, right, if, right. if you will. Uh, <laughs> Straight face and everything, huh? <laughs> Just, that's good. That's it's, good. Fine. it's fine, it's fine. It's good. Now it is important to note that uh, power generation isn't really a, a key force in this. Uh, we actually have a young lady at our club. She's nine years old. She's about 75 pounds. She cuts clean overhouse and underhouse better than many, many other people in our club. Actually. Is it Hit Girl? <laughs> yeah. It's basically Hit Girl. She's pretty awesome. Okay, so you said we're gonna learn hewing, which is the chopping, not mm -hmm. the slicing, mm -hmm. right? Okay, right. And, and so what do we need to know before we begin? We need to do some basic safety protocols. All right. Boo! I mean, <laughs> what's the injury reset at right now? Yeah. Right. You know what, this is a good point. Let's, let's hear safety, safety first, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You ever watch Rambo? Every day. Yeah, every day, and they, they have that scene where like, how sharp is this knife? Yeah, wait, that's supposed to be bad for the blade, right? No, so this that, is fine. No. See, this is bad paper. For the paper. This yeah. is this okay. is paper, and it's a lot softer than steel. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd make our swords out of this. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> so these are all razor sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And thus Absolutely. better than Anthony's. Oh, oh, Much. That's, that's. Oh my gosh, you 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 uh, yeah. His arm hairs went away. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've got a little little bald spot now. Yeah. It's absolutely. Absolutely razor sharp. And so how do you not get cut? Most of our cutting tournaments are done with two-handed swords. This is specifically because as you swing with a one-handed sword, there might be rotation and that if you hit could it with, cause oh, you that'd to be bad. Hit I used to do that in racquetball all the yourself. time. Yourself. I sucked bad. at racquetball too. Right. So we'll be doing two-handed swords. That way you won't have as much of a chance of you rotating on yourself. Sure. But there are some key rules that we have to play by here. Any time that we are walking around with one of these swords, we want to make sure that we keep tip down and we want to make sure that we keep the sword in front of us. Okay. Some places do allow you to go up top onto your shoulder. I don't like this because some people are tall, yep. like Anthony over here. I'd rather you be down. And when I say tall. down, I mean, I mean like 
straight down. I don't want to see this ever, because then if you, somebody walks mm. over to you, you could stab them in the leg. Man, it's really funny once you watch somebody shave themselves with a piece of equipment, how you so this, with much more respect. Yeah. <laughs> this is an extremely dangerous weapon. Right? I, I'm just thinking, uh, these are all things that my squire will have to worry about. <laughs> when we say that you are allowed to cut, yep. you may approach the mat, perform whatever cuts you want to, or yep. whatever cuts are in the pattern, and then you will want to walk away, preferably in guard. In guard means like you're afraid the mat's gonna come back and get you? Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be proper technique. I will have you do a couple of dry cuts with a fetter okay. to make sure that you're not doing anything that is inherently unsafe in your general cutting. Great. And correct any of those issues. The most important one is at no time should this object go into another person. Yeah. And if you do that, then pretty much safety is taken care of. Fine. Let's go. I got it. I got, I got it. it. I got Fine. it. Let's go. This Matt's like talking talking sass about my family, and then I'm like, whew. Okay, safe-ish. Uh, I, <laughs> I want you to try not to like rotate through the cut because it could actually come around and like smack you in the back if you okay. rotate it too much. You're right, because then yeah. I would yeah. be chopping myself. Exactly. Uh, okay, so instead keep it level, think of horizontal the whole time. Right. <sighs> okay, that, that's safer, yeah. So that would be a middle how, not, not usually done in tournaments, but it's okay. Okay. You can totally do that. <laughs> He's already given me the business, man. <laughs> yep. You may proceed when ready. <laughs> All right. Strange flourishes with the sharp, please don't do. <laughs> okay. Make sure that you stay well grounded and don't fall over. I don't want you to get unbalanced thinking. Mm -hmm. Once there's a target there, yeah. you're gonna have a, a mental desire to like hit it even harder. Mm -hmm. And I don't want you to slip or trip or fall. All right, that's a little better. I'm not as worried about you tripping on your cowboy boots. Okay, I can deal with that. We can let you try okay. to cut the tatami now. Yeah, okay. man, modern rogues have sharp things. What could go wrong? Woo, nothing at all. Did you bring the cut gloves? Uh, I didn't either. So I'm gonna let you guys select what weapon <gasps> you wanna use. I mean, it's dangerous to go alone. This one spoke to me. Do they have names? They have names, don't they? That one is the Munich. The Munich. Which one speaks to you, Sir Murphy? This one. The Viceroy. The okay. Viceroy. The Viceroy. Excellent. Good choice. The Viceroy. Yeah. Munich's not as brad as Viceroy. Munich is perfectly hey, hey, how acceptable. Are you, to you know hold what? That? They got beer in Munich. Whoa, whoa, already, whoa, whoa, whoa. already, whoa. already. The Viceroy does what he pleases. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He does what this guy says. The Viceroy does what Carl says. <laughs> Listen, Viceroy. I just want you to do as good as you can to give yourself a baseline so you can see whether or not you've improved after we do a little bit of training. Okay. What is the reason for the water in there? It's actually more difficult to cut when it's when it's completely dry and a little bit of water gives it some weight so it doesn't just like fly everywhere. Okay. What's that? You talking about my buddy Munich? <laughs> oh, you're saying you're saying a pilsner comes from the Czech Republic and not Germany? Well, I told you. John Rubio already explained that in the comments. I overextended, hey. but that felt awesome. <laughs> that was not safe, that was badass. <laughs> if you weren't holding a sword right now, I would run over there and high five you so hard. <laughs> just like right here, bam. I don't know if I just got lucky, but it seemed like it hit near the end and had all the power and I, you can actually feel it slicing through on there. You, you, you gotta try this. Yes, I do. You may begin when ready. Don't jerk me around on this, Viceroy. Let's do this, okay? All I'm thinking is like, please hold on to the sword. <laughs> please don't let go of the sword. Just trying to build a bond with the sword. <laughs> Sorry. You're screwing with my mojo, Brushwood. Whoa! Jeez. You got that awesome angle and everything on there. You did it actually a very good edge alignment. Excellent. You did good edge alignment. Am I you glowing? Say nice things about I feel you. like I might be glowing right now. Am I glowing? <laughs> well done, Viceroy. I gotta be honest, Carl, I didn't expect either of us to get anything right. I, uh, I didn't either. Uh, <laughs> I wanna, you guys had pretty decent edge alignment, to be com completely honest, which is probably uh, 
all your work with long swords with Anthony here. Yeah. Number two, these are actually uh, beach mats because we couldn't get true tatami. Are true tatami actually harder to cut? Much, much, much oh. denser weave of fiber. Training wheels. Yeah. yeah. That's very kind of you. Okay, so I'm going to say we got lucky on our edge alignment. That's a skill that I assume you develop over time. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed that both of us just went right through the middle, which I'm guessing it does not a world champion make. No, no, not quite. And you had a lot of additional motion in your cuts. I felt very unsafe when yeah. like, I got through it and then I tried to stop and then I could kind of feel like, oh, you're not supposed to be off balance while holding something sharp enough yeah. to shave. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I figured there was probably, there were probably some pretty bad problems with pretty much everything except the result. Yeah, the result was pretty good. Uh, it didn't spray. Your flatness of your cut is pretty decent. The, uh, the piece didn't go flying off terribly far. Those were pretty decent cuts, but I think we can improve them and make yeah. them a little bit more economy of motion. Should we see what Anthony can do? Yes. 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 Anthony. Anthony. What's the name of your sword, Anthony? This is a Talhofer. I've never used this before. It's better than Carl <laughs> sharpened this for me this morning. Yep. And I literally just bought it on Wednesday. It's funny okay. because oh, they yeah. had never used their swords either. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he got his in an alley. Yeah, I did. I did get mine he in a back alley. literally bought somewhere. that in an alley the other Wait, day. Wait, for reals? Yeah. Yeah, it seems like Anthony. You may begin when ready. Ah, oh, terrible. Oh, we did See, better this than this Anthony. I need the class too. There you go. Okay, he did better than us. Yeah. Oh, it's just like oh, how much you can. Good. So the last one through, but the first, two, the, right. the center two were great. Because I did notice uh, yeah. that it sort of knocked the top off and it went all wonky sideways. My guess is that was not right. uh, perfect. Yeah, you let's, let's talk more uh, about how we're better than Anthony. Yeah, no, it, like explain in details the ways that the Viceroy and Munich, world's <laughs> greatest sword detectives, were able to be better than Sword Anthony. detectives. <laughs> So Anthony did a great job of showing us all of the things that we look for us to not to do. And it, it's excellent that he's such a good cutter that he can do that for us. The first cut basically tore the top off, it went flying, right? Yep. That's that's something that we try to avoid. And you can see the other half of that cut, I believe, here, yeah. where you see there is a there's a big scoop coming through here. Yep. And uh, we have some pieces of the tatami that got cut separately. And so you want to see it perfectly straight all the way through. Right, so this piece where it just fell right there, yep. that's perfect. This last cut, you see there's more scooping and a piece went flying off to the side. That's, that's something that we try to avoid. He didn't do it, but if we cut through another cut that we had already made, that's called a mountain. That's to be avoided, that's a targeting error. So those are little things that we like try if to- it, Like if it peaks or something mm -hmm. like that. Where yes. Exactly. Cut it one way and like, okay, gotcha. So if I'm understanding it correctly, the perfect demonstration would be perfect line cuts starting at the top, each one not hitting the other, mm -hmm. going back and forth. How, how many do you do in a perfect uh, cut? Do we want to try? Wow, five cuts. Each one perfectly straight, not one of them hitting the previous target. Uh, that's great. Yeah, one thing I was noticing about your technique is you weren't really putting like a lot into it because I was. My you you, you were baseball. You were swinging yeah. for a home run. So we have these techniques that are, you know, we come in, come to contact, and then we do things like the tag bind. hits, where we're just like lifting off a little and then snapping very quickly. Or we have like ones where we connect right and come around and then drive what's known as the doubling, which is just a little motion, right? Little techniques like that, that have a little bit more complicated compound action, those are the types of things we wanna do against the tatami mat to really know whether or not our technique is good. Simple cuts, even against true tatami, is pretty easy to do, but more complicated cuts, uh, such as the doubling or a zek, can be pretty challenging because you just don't have as much time to move. Yeah, it's not like, just like in combat, you don't get it like, hold on a minute, uh, let me get reset. Mm -hmm. You know, you, get, you, you want to be able to straight down. So I can try to demonstrate that real quick. Yeah, go for it. Whoa. Nope. There we go. 
for us, it was just raw power and you know force equals momentum times right, right, right. the speed of light. You had good edge alignment, know. but you had lots and lots of speed catching up. Yeah. Where is the power coming from with that little of motion? Great. So this is a, a wonderful question. The two axes where you are making your motion, right, which is coming from your arms going up and down, mm -hmm. and coming from your hips going left to right. So the, when you uh, do a diagonal cut, like you guys almost did it entirely with big yeah, swing. Yeah. Just a baseball and, swing. Yeah. yeah. So you only got the power out of your hips and a little bit of power out of your arms because you were cutting like across your body with your arms, which is not ideal, but hey, it worked. That's right. cool. What I'm going to show you how to do is to to isolate the power in your shoulders up and down with good structure and isolate the power out of your hips so that you can have a very narrow window and pull all that power into it. We're gonna start with grip. Both of you were holding it in this hammer grip. When you have your, like full extension, right now you're, you're very short at the sword, right? You don't have a lot of distance that you could approach a target. We want to slide our hands down so that you have extension by riding it between your uh, index knuckle and the base of your thumb. Oh, wow, yeah. You feel like you have a lot more surface area on there that way. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna do that with both hands. And now, when we try to get that distance on target, we don't have a bend in our wrist. We wanna make sure that our wrist is nice, flat, level spot. So maybe go up a little bit more so that your wrist feels nice and comfortable. Yeah. So now you have a full extension when you're going to be making your swing. So that's that's trick number one. Number two is we want to go ahead and take a nice wide stance, settle into our knees a little bit, and we want to go straight up. And we want to start understanding this power that's coming from our shoulders. So we're going to be full extended all the way up and go all the way down, up and down. You can actually feel it starting up in your upper back. Correct, yeah. When you get to the bottom of this action, make sure you're not falling into mm. it. You wanna make sure that you counterbalance your weight and you try to keep yourself as upright as possible. Like rooted, right? Right. Another thing you guys are doing is, even though you're extending up, as you're coming down, you're starting to break at one elbow. So I wanna teach you guys a trick, and this doesn't need swords. Let's put that down for a second. Let's go down into a push-up position. <laughs> We're bad and put, at this. <laughs> put one hand uh, over top the other like you would be holding the sword. Okay. So you see how I put my hand right in that webbing? We can stay here like all day, right? Sure. This isn't too bad. <laughs> even if we go down a little bit, this isn't so bad. I mean, it yeah. sucks, but yeah. it's... But up here, we can stay here all day. What if we list to one side of our body or break one elbow? Oh, do you, yeah, you feel all that, right? that. Same the other way. Yeah, that sucks. Right, if you go way too far, you're just gonna fall right over, right? I'm probably gonna fall anyway. Uh... <laughs> Same is true when you're impacting a target. So if I can just get you to like extend out. While you have this elbow nice and out, you can, no, 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 resist. Oh. I can push you before I can collapse the sword. Yeah. Break at that elbow a little bit. Now, oh, yeah. it all breaks down, right? All of a sudden, your wrists are in charge. And your wrists, of course, are not the strongest part of your body. Yeah, they're not very strong, right? Yeah. You want to lock all of different. that. Well, not lock, but you want to extend all that out. Okay. Locking's actually bad, because you have to unlock to then make another motion. That's, okay. But you want to extend as if you're trying to reach something that's just right past your fingertips. So now let's try that a couple more times. Up, down. Go ahead, go up. Go ahead. There you go. Oh, wow. Feel balance? Here. Okay, yeah. Feel balance? Yeah. There we go. Hey, oh. look at that. That's very good balance. That'll keep you from falling over forward. Yeah. <laughs> Too worried about falling over backwards. That's actually good. If I'm getting ready to, to, to fight Anthony here, and I have a little bit of back weight, and I, he suddenly does something that I don't expect, I just drop. It's much better than me being forward and having to pull myself back and then backpedal. So there are some other things for like uh, cutting from above that we're not gonna go over too much because they're more nuanced. Sure. But we'll go ahead and transition to this, uh, to your hip rotation. The side to side. So, yeah. so that's all Y axis stuff. Mm -hmm. Now we're thinking X axis. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna isolate that out too. So we're gonna take a, a decent, like, decently wide stance. We're gonna extend all the way out to one side and we're going to make sure that our torso down to our hips all stays on one like plane and all of the rotation comes from the hips. So you see how everything from like navel up is just staying stationary? It's not this. Like a He-Man figure. It's yeah, now you're exactly. talking. Exactly. <laughs> you want a He-Man figure this through. 
I got All that. Right. So we're going to sink into our knees, extend out, cut across, then we can flip the sword, cut the other way. He-Man. He-Man. Man-at-Arms. Trap-Jaw. She-Ra. So extend Cringer. all the way out. That way you don't break at the wrist or at the elbows. So when you get to the other side, flip the sword over. Oh, yep. yeah. Yep. yeah. That go. makes sense. There you go. There we go. And what I want you to imagine while you're doing this is there's like you're on a spindle and it's going right through your center of gravity and you're just turning along that spindle. Okay. Now, am I seeing it right? On the way over, it seems like he's doing what you're saying, but on the way back, I'm seeing yeah, the right he's, elbow. He's starting yeah. to break at the elbow. Yeah. You're also getting a little off balance, which might be what's causing it. So just like make sure that you're counteracting the weight of the sword being extended away from you with a little bit of lean back. Okay, gotcha. Much better. Yeah. Hey, that last one was really good edge alignment too. Did you hear the whoosh? I did. And now we want to put those two concepts together. Step one foot forward, dominant side preferably. We're gonna sink into that a little bit. And what I want us to do is I want us to kick our hip in towards our back and I wanna go up with the sword and I wanna tilt the sword down a little bit and we're going to do the up down motion with our shoulders, right? That same motion while we do the turning with our hips at the same time to make a nice diagonal cut. A little better. Lean this sword over. Remember how I was saying? Uh, yeah. Like start it leaned over, mm -hmm. cut through. Remember the push-up drill? When it's in line and so in with your body, then you've got lots of strength. But if you start coming over to the side, like you're doing at the end of your cut. Oh yeah. Watch the follow off. through. Yeah. yeah. So just try to like keep it in line all the way through, and then you're gonna it's gonna naturally stop because you can't go past a certain point. So we're up here, we come down at an angle, arms straight, chest out, slightly leaned back, Correct. getting power from the X and the Y axes, uh -huh. and we chop down. How do, how do we reset to the other side? Do you pivot your feet? It depends on what's happening in the fight, right? And what technique you're trying to pull off. So uh, like if you were trying to cut to, from one side to the other, the most graceful thing would be either to make an advance or a retreat. Your arm work will be you come to the complete stop with full extension, right? And then you're gonna go ahead and let your arms bend to come to another angle and back down. And we wanna come all the way up again on that. Uh... So I wanted you to like feel coming all the way up, right? Mm -hmm. But in a, in a fight, right? If I was fighting Anthony and I'm like this, there's lots of things he can do that are really unfortunate, right? Right. That I suddenly have very little I can do against it because my, hand, my sword's way up there. Most of the time we want to be on the shoulder. When I did this, there's yep. a point in an arc that I got to. And when I use Anthony as a cutting target, I want to cut to the point right above where I'm going to impact Anthony and then follow through. So I cut to the point right above Anthony and then I do that same cut as I go through him. So one of the really important portions of cutting is, is edge alignment, right? We've kind of worked on how to generate enough speed and, and enough structure to get through your, your mats with conservative motion. If you hit it sideways, it's never gonna get through. Right. So we want to worry about making good whistling in the air because that whistling noise is coming from the air flowing around the edge of the sword. And so what our edge alignment is will change that pitch. Good edge alignment might sound like, but bad edge alignment by just a little bit, nothing. Oh, wow. And that's like the difference of this to this to this. That's basically all we want to do is be cognizant that our wrists are making sure that this is aimed in exactly the same direction Correct. as we're cutting. And okay. so what will happen as an effect on a piece of tatami is as you're intersecting it, if your edge alignment is turned up, you might make it through the tatami because it's a sharp sword, but this will act as a ramp and throw the tatami away. Got it. And if it's down like this, and you're coming this direction, you'll probably make it through it, but it'll hit the tatami, 
scallop across it and bend the bottom piece down and also throw a mat. Man, that makes so much sense. Uh, so that's what we do when we read, yeah. is we see how was the mat affected by the cut we were trying to do. what causes, you mentioned the scooping on there, is, is that just you rotating as Most you go through it? Most of it is you impact something and you don't have enough wrist and elbow structure to maintain that cut all the way through. So the impact on the sword, which is a big lever, right changes once it impacts a medium. Right. So if you're fully extended and like, I can do this easily, then that, the tatami is gonna be able to affect the sword. Okay. Got it, right? Are we ready to see if we get the most improved award? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's see how you do. Uh, there's plenty of other things to learn on the subject, but I think this should be able to get you through some simple cuts. Let's awesome. see what happens. Welcome to the Modern Rogue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. You may begin when ready. <sighs> okay. Probably wanna get a little bit closer. Arm straight the whole time. Yep. A little closer. Whoops. Or not. <laughs> it still worked. So that's that's probably uh, I probably should have taken your advice on on that. There you go. Nope. <laughs> Three's not bad. Three's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. Respectable. <laughs> you only got one on the first one. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, I, I get the most improved award for Brian Brushwoods. That's good. <laughs> Munich. And with that. Your watch has ended. You may begin when ready. I'm actually more nervous now that I've had the instructions. Wow! Holy cow! Holy cow! Holy cow! Okay. You're <laughs> Don't natural! Get He's a natural! <laughs> I don't know about that. Ladies okay. and gentlemen, the Viceroy! <laughs> You did mountain at the end, though. I got a little into it. You got, got a little, got a little uh, <laughs> I was like, excited. I got a little waver. blood frenzy. Before some <laughs> happens. Dude, that was amazing, though. Your alignment, your precision, like you you could have kept going, but then when you get near the bottom, it's easy to just be like, Bruh. Yeah, no, that's what I really wanted to do. I was like, you're mine, you're mine. You guys don't need to critique my uh, form. I know it was pretty good. That's good. Okay, wrap, wrap, <laughs> credits, credits are good. <laughs> That was astonishing. I felt so much more power drawing from more places. I could tell that I was still flopping more than I should. I could tell my edge alignment, like nothing but, but drills is gonna fix that, right? I right. did great. You were, thanks yes. for coming yeah. out. <laughs> so if people wanna learn much more of all this stuff, where do they go? You look up the uh, HEMA Alliance Club Finder, uh, just Google for that. Or if they happen to be in the Washington DC area, they can always go to capitalkdf.org and come to our club. Dude, and if you're here in Austin, right? Historical, Historical Weapons Historical Guild. Weapons Guild. Yeah. Check us out. We got a new YouTube channel. We're starting up, uh, doing lots of the sword and buckler stuff. Oh, well, I see you're in competition now. Yeah, that's it. Let me get my. Let me get Munich. You're out of retirement. To me, Viceroy. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I have the power. Carl, you distract Brian. I'll get Jason. Go away, bad guys. Crush your enemies. <laughs> Edge alignment, edge alignment. Not the toe. Wait, Munich, come back. Viceroy, give me sight beyond sight. <laughs> Trademarked. Viceroy of Munich on the case. My look was a little sassy. It was a little sassier than I'm happy. Got, look, you're the wild card, boy, well, Viceroy. It, it wasn't like a, it was a kind of a. Perfect. That's it was like Viceroy. coy, <laughs> like so coquettish. <laughs>